Good morning to you. It's Sunday the 9th of July 2017. Warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom tour coming to you as always live from the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire, boys and girls. I'm just back from church. Yes, just back from church. Nice morning. I got up around about uh, half past seven this morning. Uh, had some breakfast, which was overnight oats. Now, overnight oats, I'm making like a little storage jar. Now, I won the ingredients for this a couple of weeks ago at Slimmer's World, as you well know. Um, and they give you all the ingredients, although I have bought some new stuff since. And it's basically a little jar, about, um, I suppose, about as big as that, maybe a bit, bit, bit wider than that and a bit taller. OK, and in the bottom you put, um, well, it's, it's, it's fat-free yoghurt, some sort of berries and dried porridge oats. And you kind of layer it. I, I, I managed to layer it twice because I do big layers. But you could do sort of three lots, you know. Blueberries, fat-free yoghurt, porridge oats, blueberries. Fat, no, no. What you do, and you do that the night before or the afternoon before. I tend to do it the afternoon before, sort of around about lunchtime. And then the next day, which is like 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, little about 18, 20 hours later, all the oats have soaked into that delicious fat-free yogurt and you sit there with a spoon and you have that with your cup of tea and your tablets if you're a tablet taker first thing in the morning. I'm sure you are. <laughs> Everyone over 50 seems to take tablets, don't they? Including me. Except for my sister. She don't like any tablets at all. I keep telling her to take something from those awful wrinkles on her face but she won't listen to me, my sister. <laughs> so I did that. Uh, I cleaned up after the cat. Not too messy this morning, although I've got a I've got a bin now completely full of cat waste. I have an incontinent cat, and uh, three or four times a day I have to clear up a load of newspaper that I've put in an area of the kitchen to catch her mess. To. Sometimes worse than others, to be honest. Not too bad this morning, but sometimes she'll go and walk around and oh, it's oh, and the smell. Oh, God. What I have to do now is close the kitchen door and the toilet door downstairs so that the smell doesn't come up. <laughs> it's, it's awful. What can you do? What can you do? So I did that. Uh, jumped on my bike. I lovely cycled to church this morning, I've got to tell you. I cycled through fields and a little, little gravel path. It's just past the golf course to get to church in the morning. It's about 25 minutes there, 25 minutes back. And, you know, when when it's when it's weather like this and you're cycling through what you're cycling and all those weeks of nastiness and cold and rain and snow just pale into insignificant. Isn't it funny? I'm sitting here talking to you today. Actually, I've forgotten about how cold it is in winter. Do you find that? And similarly, when you're really cold in the winter, you completely forget what it is like to feel nice and warm and comfortable in the summer, isn't it? And we, I think we're having quite a good summer this year. I really do. Last year was the same, isn't it? We had quite a long summer last year as well. The only thing is, of course, the blooming garden keeps drying out. And I look out the window and, I, oh, and plants are like this. You know, they're limp. They've all gone terrible. I hate it when it goes limp. You can't do anything with it once it goes limp, can you, girls? You know, when it's like, oh, oh, it'll be all right in a minute. No, it won't. It's gone limp. Take it away, dear. Don't want to look at that anymore. Thank you very much. I'm talking about my plants, of course. You've got to give them a good watering. Good watering. That's what you need. And I had to do that last night. So I've come back home. Uh, Vivian in the church this morning. She's the lady who sit next to me. She was a bit tired because once again, I said, you know, I said, how are you today? And she goes, oh, like that. All oh, right, what's what's up? She said, oh, well, I had the grandchildren dumped on me again uh, this weekend. And you see, this happens to grandparents. I know this. There is someone else in my life who has to remain nameless due to certain people that might be watching the show. <laughs> who rings me up? And says, oh, the grandchildren have been dumped on me again today. I said, well, say no. She said, I can't. I love them. I love them. And Vivian's the same. She says, how can I ever say no? I love them, but I'm so tired. Two days. She had them for two days. Poor old Vivian, bless her heart. Oh, I do like her, Vivian. Everything went okay today at church, so she didn't have anything good to complain about this morning. Apparently, 
I shouldn't really tell you this, but apparently I was saying to her, Mum, is there two organists here? She said, yes, there's a man and a woman. I said, oh, only one's better than the other, aren't they? And she laughed. And she said, well, actually, they don't get on. I said, what do you mean? They just don't see eye to eye at all, the two organists at the church. <laughs> it's funny when you get better. I think that's a little bit of a performing thing, really. You know, as a performer, in a way, I suppose I'm a performer. You know, you like to be left to get on with it. You don't like people to go, oh, can you do this? Can you do that all the time? Oh, it gets on your nerves. It really does. You just like to be get, get on with it. So like when people are doing the karaoke, generally 99% of them come up, sing their song and go. You know, and that's great. And they have a good time. They come up, sing, not go as in leave the place. They go back and sit down and wait for the next song, which is great. Some people, oh, oh, can you do this with the microphone? Oh, can you turn the music up? Oh, can we have a bit of echo? Oh, can you turn the lights down? They're too bright for my poor little eyes. Oh, what do they want, for Christ's sake? It's not the blooming BBC television centre, is it? This here where we are today is incidentally, you know, it's, it's like an arm of the BBC. It's not really anything to do with the BBC, but I do feel like I'm an arm of the BBC, you know. I'm still looking around for a suitable globe. It's, I've been, it's about, about two years now I've been looking for a globe. I bumped into someone last night, funnily enough. Have I got it here? Hang on. No, I haven't got it here. Um, if you saw yesterday's show, you will have seen I had a BBC One colour T-shirt on, as given to me by the lovely Ray Reynolds for my birthday, which is a lovely present. And I had that on last night. And this bloke outside, I say bloke, he was probably about 28, 30, maybe a bit younger than that. He said, oh, I really like your T-shirt. I said, oh, yeah, it was given to me by a friend of mine, Ray Reynolds. And he said, oh, I'll have to get one of those. He said, I've got one of the models. I said, what do you mean you've got one of the models? I've got an actual BBC One model. You know when the world would be turning and that thing would be behind? He's actually got a model. I said, where did you get that from? He said, years ago there was an auction and I paid quite a lot of money for it. I said, well, how much did you pay for it? And he said, £227. I would have paid that. I said, do you want to sell it? No, it's not for sale, mate. I said, go on, how much do you want? He said, no, it's not for sale. He's got a model of BBC One as used on the telly. Remember when you see that globe going round there? It was only a small thing. You would be surprised. You can find it on YouTube. You can actually see the model and you'll be surprised how battered and bruised it looks. But what they do, you see, they, they, would, they would have a camera in front of it because it was an actual thing that existed. It wasn't a computer program. Years later, when they got rid of the bit of the back, you know, it, it was a globe turning and it was like a globe turning behind it as well. Well, that was a concave mirror, you see, and the thing used to turn like that. Now, years later, when it just become a globe on its own and it was all perfect, that didn't exist. It was a computer generated image. It didn't exist. Well, this stuff exists, right? All this stuff exists. Something doesn't exist behind me. Can you tell what that is as a matter of interest? Something behind me here doesn't actually exist. Do you know what that is? One of these items behind me doesn't exist. Can you see? Go and have a guess, and I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, so that was a, an image. But the thing before it was, was an actual model. And the camera would zoom into it. And then, electronically, they'd add different colours to it. And if it was a little bit, I suppose, you know, a little bit scratchy, they could get rid of that so you wouldn't know. But it did look a battered old thing. When you look on YouTube, you can find that, you know, model of BBC Globe. And you'll see exactly how it is. They had one in all the, every single different area in the UK, because the BBC is Britain, uh, uh, split up into different areas. You've got the South East, you've got Wales, you've got Scotland, North East, North and North, and each area had its own globe, you know, and underneath it would see BBC One uh, North East or BBC One Midlands, something like that. All very clever, really. Anyway, he actually owns one. He bought one. How fantastic would it be to have something like that? I've never met anyone who owned one of those. Fantastic. So that was last night. Um, oh, let's say hello to a few of the people uh, this morning. Uh, good morning to Shania, who joins us this morning. Yusuf. Good morning, Yusuf. Hope you're well, sir. Uh, Kevin's there. Hello, Kevin Prentice. How are you, sir? Nice to see you. Is that Kevin up in Manchester? Ooh. No, it's not, is it? That's Kevin from Reflex. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, Diane's there. Good morning, Diane. Have a beautiful day to you as well, Diane. Ray Reynolds. Uh, Gary Battler's there. Ben Jameson. Alan Greeder, uh, Yusuf wishes us a happy Sunday and a happy Sunday to you as well, Yusuf. 
Uh, greetings to uh, the children. Good morning, Gary. Good morning, Evie. Harry Butler and Olivia Butler. My great niece is great nieces. Great nieces and nephew, great nephew and nephew is watching the show this morning. Oh, this will be their highlight of the day, to be honest, Gary. Once, once they've seen this, you might as well just send them all to bed because it be, won't, won't be anything as exciting as watching their great uncle in the morning. I'm sure that is the case. I am correct in that. Thank you. Ding! Yes. Uh, morning to Alan Greedhauer, uh, who says, Have a fab day, you love. Still remember you DJing at the Bridge in Putney. Oh, yes, that's where, well, that's where I started, really. On the gay scene... The, the, the very first place, uh, like pub club, that I started was indeed the bridge in Putney. Uh, at, but it was before it was called the bridge. Now, who was the bloke who run that? Oh, gosh, I can't remember his name now. Can't remember, but I went there when it was Kitty's Bar. So when it was called Kitty's Bar, which is when it, it, it opened, and that, that was run, I can't remember who that was run by either. It wasn't Ken. It was way before Ken. Uh, and Andy Stevens, he run the bridge. Before Andy Stevens, it was Ken. Before Ken, it was called Kitty's Bar, and that was run by someone else. Uh, and I worked for nothing in the bridge in Putney, or Kitty's Bar in Putney. I actually worked for nothing because I wanted to get in, and I couldn't find a way in. So I went there, went, oh, I'm a DJ. I'd like to, oh, okay, just leave your card. I said, well, maybe I can offer you something that no, no one else has. Oh, what's that then? I'll do it for nothing. And that's how I got in. And from there, uh, about a year, I think I, they didn't pay me at all. Uh, and then one day, the owner of the pub, because it was like two pubs, wasn't it? It was separate. So that side, which it was that side and that side, it was only that side that was gay, the, the, the right hand side, if you were looking at it from Putney Bridge. And... Um, Yes, the bloke who owned it, he came in once and I was doing my DJ and I, I talked a lot as well then while playing the records. And he came in and he says, oh, hello. He says, how much are you paying him then? He said, well, he's doing it for nothing. He said, right, from now again, I'll give you £10. There you go. And he gave me a tenner. And from then it was £10. And then an, a, 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 um, an audition came up at the Black Cat. Now, I'd never been to the Black Cat, never even heard of it. But I gather it was the place, it was the place to be at that time, you know, in the 80s. I went for the audition there and I got the job and, and then um, it all sort of um, it developed from there, really. It all developed from the black cap, everything, the whole thing. It really did. So uh, yeah, I was quite lucky there. Uh, morning, Mark Kempner. Good morning. Did you have a good pride? Well, I didn't do anything. I just went to work as usual yesterday. I uh, was very, very disappointed. Yesterday, uh, got the work. Nice little crowd in. Uh, we had a little bit of a giggle. I, I give them a little bit of a giggle on the microphone and I do requests in there. And um, uh, unfortunately, the act didn't turn up and we could not get hold of her. We could get hold of the agent, but not the artist. And I don't know what happened, um, but they didn't turn up. The uh, show's supposed to go on at half past ten. I told them it looked like uh, the person was running a little bit late. Got to quarter to eleven, eleven o'clock. And I'm always quite honest. I don't believe in making people hang around if you know something's up. So I just tell them exactly what's going on at the time. And it got to 20 past seven. I said, look, you know, we're nearly an hour late now. Um, uh, I don't think they're going to come for whatever reason. You don't know the reason. It could be anything. Don't know the reason. Uh, but just to let you know, you know, if you don't want to hang around, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say hopefully she'll be here because that may not be the case. Maybe she was. Maybe she wouldn't. I don't know. See, we're completely out of our hands. We can't get them on the mobile phone. We can only get to the agent. The agent's telling us she can't get them on the phone. So that's how, that's the way it is. Got to 20 to 12, and then we have to pull the, pull the plug, unfortunately, uh, because we're not supposed to put anyone on after 11.30 to start. Do you see what I mean? We do have a bit of a sound issue there with neighbours. We have to be very careful uh, with neighbours. And when there's an artist on, they always want you to turn it up, turn it up, turn it up all the time. It's all a bit like that. So you have to think of the neighbours as well. Because if you lose the licence, we're all out of a job. You have to be very careful. So come around about 20 to 12, we had to say, OK, you know, even now, if the person turns up now, we can't put them on now. It's too late, unfortunately. And uh, that's just unfortunate. But actually, everyone's very understanding. Where's my pen gone? There it is. Uh, everyone was quite understanding. But um, 
it's it's a weird thing. As I'm standing up there on the stage doing the bit before the show, and then they don't turn up, you you feel it's your fault. I'm embarrassed to stand there and say, look, I'm really sorry, but this is how it is. You know? But I think it's it's very, very important to be open and honest with people and not lie and pretend that they might come a bit later, you know, in order to sell a few more drinks. I think that's very unfair. It's probably not good for business, but it's it, it's very unfair to do that. So I tell people as the night goes on, the, the situation and what's 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 uh, materialising or not, as the case may be. But you do feel that it's your fault. And I apologise. You know, I'm really sorry, everyone, you know, not coming tonight. It's not my fault. But people want to hear an apology. And that's what's missing these days, isn't it? How many times have you complained of something when it's clearly their fault? Now, I'm not talking about you. Not necessarily talking about you who's taken something. You know, I'm not happy with that. But actually, that is the correct thing. That's whatever it is is happening in front of you or, or a service provided. They're doing everything right. The fact that you don't like it is neither here nor there. But when it says something on the tin... And you go, and that doesn't happen, what's on the tin, then you have a right to complain. But how many times now do people say sorry? Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. You know, I had this a couple of years ago. Now, where was it again? I can't remember now. It was in some sort of shop or something like that. And I said, well, are you going to apologise or not? And it's like, well, why should I? Oh, that was it. Um, the news agents. It was the news agents, wasn't it? About two years ago, let me think carefully. Uh, I'm in the news agent. Now, what happened in there? Oh, I can't remember now. Oh, how annoying. Can't remember now. And I know, well, are you going to say sorry or anything? And he's like, well, why should I? And that, and that is the general attitude of people now. I'll tell you what, once they do that to me, I'm gone, mate. I, I, I don't. I, I, years and years ago, I had a problem with a Philips cassette recorder. I was, I think, 15 years old. So my dad had to deal with it all. What happened? I sent it away with the power pack. Something went wrong with it. And they sent it back minus the power pack. Well, the power pack never arrived. And my dad was going to and from. It was all by telephone. There was no computers or emails then. And um, then they offered to pay half of one. But they wouldn't send a power pack back. So I never, ever bought another item from Philips again, right up to today. 27 years. These companies don't seem to realise that. There are people like me, perhaps you might think that's a little bit excessive, you know, not buy anything for all those years. Uh, but that's why, because they, they upset my father and me when I was 15 years old all those years ago. Never bought anything from them again. But there's so many people just don't apologise anymore, <laughs> including politicians. Although some of them do, don't they? Now and again, you do get a sorry or something like that. Oh, talking to politicians, did anyone look up that Jacob Rees Mogg? Is it Mogg? He's the conservative bloke that was on um, Question Time uh, this week. He's, he, you, you, you can get it on the BBC Internet, uh, BBC iPlayer. Question Time. Watch it. Jacob, he's, I, I quite like him. He's really excessively posh. He's excessively posh and quite rich, but he doesn't make a secret of it. He doesn't pretend to be like us. Well, not me, but you. <laughs> you know, he doesn't pretend. I quite like him, Jacob. Did anyone look at him on the question time or anything like that? Do let us know. Uh, back to some of your messages, boys and girls. Uh, Richard says, is it the flag? Yes, it is. The flag there doesn't exist, right? So I can touch these things. Look. Can you hear that? Right? But look. My hand goes behind the flag. It doesn't exist. Isn't that interesting? I thought you'd find that interesting. Well done, Richard. There's no prize. Well, there is a prize. You can have a spider plant if you want. I've got loads of spider plants downstairs that I made a while ago. Oh, you know what? I, I know I can get rid of them. Tomorrow night, I will give I will give in a carrier bag a spider plant to everyone who sings. That'll get rid of the bloody things. <laughs> what it is, I've got three massive spider plants in the house, and every year they have babies, right? And I feel a bit guilty cutting off the babies and tossing them out. <laughs> they feel like an unwanted child. 
you know, cut them out and chuck them out. I don't, I can't do that. So I make little plants out of them. I've got, I've got about 15 of them outside. And I offered to give them away on the show last year. And that worked very well. Everyone was turning up at the pub for the free spider plants. This year, no one wants to know. Now, why don't anyone want any of my spider plants? <laughs> There's a phone line open if you want to call in at some point. There it is. O to O. That doesn't exist either. That phone number doesn't exist either. See, if my hand goes behind it, it doesn't really exist. See, look at that. 020-8144-3477 is my phone number this morning, if you want to call in, okay? 020-8144-3477. I've got Skype as well. Skype name is United Kingdom Talk. All one word, United Kingdom Talk. Uh, good news with the shower thing. Here it is. If you saw the DIY show yesterday. Good morning, Jimmy. To be Butler International. You've been picking up your sister from the wedding yesterday. Was she drunk? That's Jimmy Butler. That's one of my nephews there. He's the 20 year old with his own, he's got his own business, JPL Autos, where he fixes paint and that on cars. You know, if you've got a bit of damage, he does it very well. You can't see the join. You can't, very, very good job. And he won't rip you off either. He's up in Lincolnshire. Um, yes, so here is my fixed shower thing. Look at this. Remember I glued this yesterday? Now, if you saw the DIY show yesterday, this is it. Now, this looks pretty solid to me, right? I think I've fixed it. Can you see that? You might just about, yeah, about, about, yeah you can just see that the glue on there is, is completely set now. It's about almost 20, 22 hours since I did it. And it's just glistening there. Can you see it glistening? But um, it doesn't smell at all anymore. No, I think I fixed that. That is really tough. Hang on a minute. Yeah, my pen won't even go in that. So that's really t Oh, gosh. So I'm going to stick that back on my spindle. I like that. Don't you like that word spindle? I shall stick that back onto my spindle uh, later on and have a shower before I go to work tonight. That's what I'll do. Uh, of course, it's Sunday night, boys and girls. So tonight we've got karaoke at the Camden Eye. Karaoke Eye, we call it, at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. You come out of the tube station, you look across the road, and it's there. Like... 10 seconds walk from the tube station across the road. If you can't see it when you come out, you've come out the wrong exit. There's only two exits there, I think. Um, Camden High Street and Kentish Town Road. You want the Kentish Town Road exit. You come out of there. Oh, there it is. You cross over the road. You come in. I'm on the left. You say, hello, Chris. I look at you like I don't know you or I've never seen you before. And you put your song in and you have a sing song. Or you can just come and watch. Lots of people just to, uh, just come and watch at karaoke nights. We have some and really good singers there last week. Really good. Not that it's about good singing, because it's not. Karaoke is about taking part and having a bit of a laugh, OK? I don't do serious. I keep telling people this. Oh, why can't you be serious? Because that's not me. That's why that, if you want serious, you know, go and spend 10 hours in a church somewhere. I've done my serious this morning. I've done an hour and 10 minutes in the church. I'm here now and I'm letting go. I'm letting go. I'm letting my hair... Well, there's not much left, is there, really? But there we are. I'm so pleased with this. I'll let you know. Perhaps you'd like a little video of me in the shower tomorrow. Would you like that? Would that be of excitement to you, do you think? Huh? <laughs> 0208144 uh, is my phone number. Ah, now, is Jimmy still with us this morning? I've got to see if my nephew's still with us. Hang on a minute. Let's see. Is he still there? I don't know if he's still there or not. No, he's not. Oh, what a shame. Uh, Jimmy, uh, your mother, my sister, is very fed up with you nicking her phone charger. Can't you just buy your own one? She's fed up with you nicking her phone charger. Take it back down to her now. She was looking everywhere for that yesterday, and I couldn't call her because you've nicked her phone charger again. Mind you, I mean, my sister, you know, she, she rings me up and tells me these things. She don't help herself. I said, well, why don't you ride it somewhere? Oh, oh, well, I want to charge it up. I said, well, charge it up somewhere else where, where he can't find it. Hide it. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I was one of those people that you can't help. You know, they sit there moaning and moaning. And, moaning, and I've come across so many people like this. They moan and moan and moan. And then when you give them... Uh, a, a a resolution that will solve the problem. Oh, 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 well, I can't do that. Years ago, uh, back, back, about a year ago, actually, a friend of mine, who will remain lameless, uh, rung up. He was in a little bit of debt. It was about, I think it was about £800 of debt, which uh, is not a small amount of debt. 
But I said, he said, I don't know what to do. I said, OK, how much do you earn? Da, 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 da. What's your rent? Oh, well, I live with my dad. OK, fine. Do, do you not pay rent? No, I don't. Well, I said, well, you can start paying him rent for a start. The bloke's nearly 40, for Christ's sake. Dear me. <laughs> don't pay rent at 40. Anyway. So, uh... I said, OK, so you get this amount a week. I said, da 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 So I looked at a piece of paper, I wrote it all down. I said, OK, you can clear that debt in two months. And he's like, can I? I said, yeah. He said, well, how do I do that? All you've got to do is not go out for two months because he does go out and he likes a drink and he likes a party, you know, and he likes a nightclub and a pub. Oh, well, I can't do that. I said, well, if you do, that is, you can clear this easily and have money left over at the, at the month. I said, all you've got to do is stay in and watch the telly for a couple of months. Maybe go around mate's houses and, oh, no, no, I can't stay in. Well, there you go then. What's the point? Why did you even ask me? Oh, well, isn't there another way? I said, no, there's no other way. How can there be another way? Unless you win the lottery. Stupid people. You give them the resolution... Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, you bet you don't understand. I said, well, why did you ask me in the first place then? <laughs> so difficult, some people. Good morning, Lee. Morning, Lee. Hope you're well this morning. And lovely Terry's there as well. And Kevin Webster's there as well. Good morning to you all. Uh, John says, were you doing community service with the high-vis top on? Uh, you may have seen a little photo that I put up earlier today. I had a high-vis top on while I was cycling back from church this morning. No, dear. That is so that I'm seen on the road and a juggernauts don't go over my pretty little face. I mean, you would be upset if I wasn't here every morning, wouldn't you? Or near enough every morning. I'd like to think you might be upset anyway. Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, uh, no, no luck with internet in the car, I'm afraid. Um, I've had, uh, I'm, I'm on a Toyota forum now as well, and a, and a three network forum. Uh, if you've been watching the show, you'll know I've got a, a, a Toyota Touch and Go, which is like the in-car multimedia system that, that I've got in my car. And I'm on the three network. Now, I can use the phone, hands-free, by pushing buttons on the steering wheel and things like that. I can play music from the phone, but I can't get the car to connect to the internet on the phone. What's supposed to happen uh, is that you've got your, oh, what's that thing called? Hot, personal hotspot switched on. The car somehow by Bluetooth talks to the phone and then the phone picks up the internet and then the internal car sat-nav system can then pick up the traffic. But the phone is not picking up the internet. And we can't work out why it is. I've got some wonderful people all trying to help. Toyota have been on the phone for ages to me. Uh, three have been trying to assist me as well. I, I top marks the Toyota and the Three Network as well for all the help they're trying here. But we just don't seem to be able to get this damn thing to work, unfortunately. Yeah, that's why it is. Uh, Lee says, did your DI work? Well, you've only just joined us, Lee. We've done that, Lee. We've done that bit of the show. We've done the shower knob, dear. Here it is, look. And it's pretty solid. So I'm going to try that out. This That's going on this afternoon. Okay, when I have a shower before work, around about uh, half past four or five o'clock. Because uh, I generally leave about uh, about half past five, quarter to six on a Sunday for work. Um, I shall try that out. And I'm sh I'm pretty, this feels very solid. It really does. I don't know. And, and it's neat. It's neat. Can you see how neat that is? Very neat job. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. Um, now, what was I going to... I was just going to say something to you then. I can't remember now. <laughs> what was I going to say then? Let me have a look here. I, I've asked you about Jacob, didn't I? Did I? Let me have a look. Uh, oh, good news. Good news. Remember I complained about the swimming pool, the changing room at the Hilton Hotel in Wokingham. Now, I usually go swimming just up the road there at the... Uh, we've got a Hilton in Bracknell, and they've got a lovely little pool. It's not a not a full-size pool, but it, it does the job. It's generally not too busy in there. Sometimes it gets a busy, bit busy, and but generally the people in there respect each other, and we can go up and down unless you get some idiot in there, you know, who thinks he can go up and down at the speed of light and splash everyone. We don't like those sort of people, dear. Not respectful of others, really. Uh, well, the Hilton, uh, when they were having a refit, we had to go to the Hilton in Wokingham. 
Um, the changing rooms there are absolutely dire, and you just wouldn't expect it from somewhere like that, you know? There's mould on the ceiling, the air conditioning is dripping, also chucking out freezing cold air for some reason into the, uh, into the changing room there, and it, it's just filthy. Well, I wrote to them. I wrote to them, and they wrote back and uh, gave me a gift card for $50, I think it was. Now, I pay for my membership there annually. It's not too expensive, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. Works out to something like 40 quid a month or something like that. I pay annually for that. And I did ask Trevor, who's the manager, if we can use that, if, if I can use my card as part payment for that. And uh, he said, well, we're not usually supposed to do that. Let me see what I can do for you. And he's, and he's sorted it, actually. What he wasn't able to do, we, he wasn't able to take it off the full amount of the annual things. I, I paid that. But what I've got is been given an extra month or two months on top of that. So that's good, isn't it? You see, if you're not, if you're not happy about something, and, you, you know, I, I don't, as long as you're not one of those people that don't blooming well complain about everything, don't they? Oh, moan and moan and moan. Anything to get something free. Always, and they look, I swear some of these people look for things that are wrong. You know, you'd be in there, everything's like, oh, I'm not happy about that. And I'm like, what? Like, you know, that there. Oh, what, what there? That, that tiny little mark on there. Oh, and they're straight down to hotel. Oh, can I have a free upgrade? No, no, I'm not like that. But if you've got a genuine reason to complain, I think you should complain. You can often get things. And I got this little card which has given me uh, a month or so's free membership. So that's good, isn't it? So I must thank Trevor for that. And I'm all paid up. Uh, poor Maureen at the moment. Uh, you know Maureen? She's one of our wonderful karaoke singers. Such a warm lady. Such a warm lady. She watches the show via a USB stick. Oh, yes. She's got two USB sticks. Well, I think one, one's mine, one's hers. There it is. USB stick. And what I do is I put the... Because she hasn't got internet. So I put the shows on one of these and that's it. And it, and it fab. A little thing like that holds about 20 shows on there. How do they do that? It doesn't get any heavier. You know, ah, oh, that's probably because I've lost weight, isn't it? At Slimmer's World. My next weigh-in is on Tuesday. I am hoping, fingers crossed, Tuesday, that I might get a down to 13 stone. I was 14 stone. I'm now 13 stone, one and a half pounds. So I'm hoping to get down to the 13 stone bit, all right? Um... Oh, talking about this this fixing thing, I had a little message uh, from Gary Owen. Hello, Gary, who says this won't work. Try a ju you need a jubilee clip. Well, I'll try this and see what happens. I'll try this. That looks pretty solid to me, actually, uh, Gary. It's not like the the sort of uh, glue that I did before. The, the super glue didn't work. This was the gorilla glue that you and it's like aridite. You have to mix two things together, and it's as hard as rocks. It really is, all right. 020 uh, 3477 if you want to call in on the show uh, this morning, boys and girls. Uh, good news. Good news about that little boy uh, who I picked up in this morning's Telegraph. That's Charlie Guard. You remember the little boy? And uh, the doctors had been wanting to turn off the uh, uh, machine that's uh, keeping him alive. They say he's got no chance at all. Well, um... The American people, uh, including Donald Trump, uh, Pope, Pope Francis and a few other people have been offering to help and indeed pay for any treatment or anything. Uh, there's been another development this morning in The Telegraph. Uh, U.S. congressmen have proposed giving Charlie Guard residency in America so the terminal ill baby can receive experimental treatment in the country. Uh, these two people will table a bill to the House of Representatives tomorrow to bring Charlie and his family to the US. Their intervention comes as Charlie's parents are expected to join a demonstration today outside Great Ormond Street Hospital uh, after they vowed the fight is not over. Now, um, as I said on the show yesterday and the day before, I don't quite understand why... The doctors in this country are so against um, the child being moved to another country to try and fix whatever is what's wrong with him. You know, there are no guarantees in this way. You know, I'm, I could I could have a I don't know I could have a sore finger tomorrow and get something in terrible 
bacteria that eats away at my arm. We don't, don't know what's going to happen, do we? Don't know what's going to happen. But I do feel that they should uh, be given a chance, even if it's just experimental. If all they've got is an experimental job uh, drug, then for God's sake, why not just use it? Why not use it? Um, should this little boy be ordered to die because a third party overriding the wishes of his parents believes it can conclusively determine that immediate death, what is best for him? Charlie's parents, both in their 30s, uh, want to take their child to a hospital in the US for experimental treatment. Uh, they lost a lengthy battle after jo doc uh, judges ruled in favour of doctors uh, who argued that the therapy would not improve Charlie's quality of life. Well, how do they know that? It's an experimental treatment. You don't know. Maybe it won't. Maybe it won't. Maybe it will It will make him die more quickly. But it's the only blooming chance he's got. Wouldn't you take that chance? Why shouldn't they take that chance? The Guard supporters will today deliver a petition of more than 350,000 signatures calling on doctors uh, to allow the baby to travel and receive treatment. It comes after a proposal by Pope Francis to give Charlie a Vatican passport so he can be flown there for potentially life-saving treatment. Charlie inherited the 40 RRM2 gene. That's a bit technical, isn't it? Uh, from his parents, affecting the cells responsible for energy production and respiration and leaving him unable to move or breathe without a ventilator. The proposed therapy is not a cure. So... Uh, there's another little bit of a uh, news there, so hopefully um, they will be able to take the little boy to uh, the United States. You know, fingers crossed there. Uh, back onto that. I'm sorry, I was talking about Maureen as well. Yeah, she's got a bit of a sore throat at the moment. Uh, our good friend Maureen, and she think I think she said she might have nodules on there. I'm not sure if you should be singing if you've got nodules on your voice, on your um, on your throat. Is it the vocal cords or something like that? I don't know how that works. I'm sure, didn't Scylla Black had that once and she wasn't allowed to sing for a, a long period of time? I don't know. I mean, you can still turn up at karaoke's and not sing, but um, if you're not supposed to sing, I'm not sure sure that uh, that you should with the, the old nodules on the throat, are you? Don't forget singing tonight, boys and girls, at uh, Karaoke Eye at the Camden Eye, 8 till 11 p.m. every Sunday night. It's a lovely night there. They've got a fantastic sound system there, you know. Great little... The speakers are not massive, but they're very, very powerful. I must find out what those speakers they've got in there are, actually. All right. Um... Ah. Oh. Good news, boys and girls. I, I say this is good news because I hate the programme. I hate the programme. Big Brother viewers didn't turn up at the eviction on Friday. Now, I don't watch the programme. I think it's awful. I think that sort of television is, is giving us trouble with the young people that watch it. They watch Big Brother, Love Island, and they think it's quite acceptable to act like that way out in the street. I think it's uh, and I think big, I think this sort of television has a lot to answer for. It is not entertainment. It's awful and ghastly and vile. Big Brother viewers have noticed that the angry crowd gathered for Friday night's eviction was very sparse indeed, proving that the show's popularity has nosedived thanks to its love rival, Love Island. Now, I must say, I've got a few Love Islands. I mean, have you watched Love Island? I mean, they're all right to look at, these people, aren't they? But as I said before, you know, if you was to open the top of their head, you would see a nasty green, brown, bubbling mass going on in there of just nastiness and awfulness and ghastliness. It's all very well looking at them, but would you actually want to spend a, a, a couple of hours in, in, in a living room talking to them? <laughs> Hardly any members of the public were standing outside the house waiting for the latest eviction who turned out to be Joe, I don't know who that is, doing Channel 5's latest live episode. One cheeky viewer, who happened to be Blog Brother, Biog Brother 2012, what's a Biog Brother, what's that then? Uh, suggested most of the crowd must have stayed at home to watch Love Island. <laughs> he tweeted, looks like everyone decided to stay in. Another fan jokes, I queue behind more people at Asda. It was that quiet. It's all over, mate. 
take it off air and bring back Dallas. That's what I say. When the camera panned around the studio outside the house, the staggered steps where audience members are usually standing were empty. Meanwhile, the spaces next to the stage itself were very poorly stocked with just three people loitering. I like that word, loitering, on one side of the platform. It may have been the lowest turnout for the show since uh, Jade Goody in 2007. Oh, dear, Jim, it's all over. Good. Get it off the telly. Like Love and Love Island, get it all off the telly. And if you like that sort of thing, uh, you may uh, remember that... Uh, uh, what's his name now? Let me say, uh, what's his name? Oh, damn, can't remember. His blooming name. Ant. Ant from Ant and Deck. Now, he's got a little bit of a drink problem at the moment, hasn't he? Uh, you may have seen it in the paper. We never make light of anything like that. But in uh, this morning's Daily Mirror, it says a replacement for Ant for this year's I'm a Celebrity may have already been found. And it could be a famous household name. Oh, yes. As one half of Ant and Deck remains in rehab, battling an alcohol and prescription pill addiction. Oh, what, what prescription pills would that be then, I wonder? I don't know. ITV bosses are looking ahead to their reality shows to see who could be the best presenter. While Ant hasn't officially pulled out of presenting the show with his on-screen partner, Declan, uh, ITV have given him the option of taking a year off. This means his usual six-week stint in Australia could be taken up by someone else. And the most popular option, oh, not again. Not her again. Holly Willoughby. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with Holly Willoughby. Every show that's on ITV, it's either her or Philip Blumen Schofield. Both who are excellent TV hosts. They're very natural. They do their jobs very well. But God's sake, can we see someone different, please? Same old people time and time again, honestly. Why has that happened? It never used to happen. You know, you'd, you'd have all these different stars and celebrities on the telly all doing their own shows. Now it's just these two all the time. Philip Schofield or Holly Willoughby. All the time. On and on. I'd love to sit there, you know, in a restaurant with them, have a cup of tea and a good old chat about this, that and the other. I'd love to. But we need to see someone different doing it, don't we? Of course, you know, I'm fully available for a six-week free holiday in Australia to take on the job if anyone wants to offer it to me. I doubt that'll happen. Why do we always have to have the same blooming people all the time? It says, this morning's Holly could be whisked off to Oz. Oh, you know what that means, don't you? You'll have that blooming Ryland presenting this morning for six weeks. Oh, it just gets worse and worse, doesn't it? Oh, dear. This morning's Holly could be whisked off to Oz with her whole family in tow as show bosses want a safe pair of hands to take over from Ant. Uh, it's their biggest show of the year. Oh, really? I'm a celebrity. Is ITV's biggest show of the year? I didn't know that. So it used to be X Factor, didn't it? Not anymore. So they're keen to get a plan in place should Ant want to continue his name, his downtime. Holly is the number one choice. OK, well, that's interesting. I don't know who, um, well, wh wh whether or not she'd do it. Uh, others include Love Island host Caroline Flack, Queen of the Jungle Scarlet Moffat. Oh, who's she? Oh, not Mark and former I'm celebrity Mark Wright. Please, not Mark Wright. All right, all right. My name's Mark Wright. All right, all right. Oh, it's awful, dear. Ghastly people on the telly. Can someone give Bruce Forsyth a knock and see if he's sorted himself out yet? Can we have him on there? Or who's that bloke who does the um quiz show? Brian Connolly. Brian Connolly? Is it Brian? Oh, gosh, what's his name now? It does... There's a quiz show on ITV. What's his name? I'm, I I bumped into him once in a King's Head theatre bar. Uh, is it Brian? Or is it... What's his name now? Anyone Anyone remember his name? He's, he do, he's a comedian as well. He's very, very good. Very good indeed. Bradley Walsh. Thank you, John. Bradley Walsh. He could do it, can't he? <laughs> Me and Bradley Walsh, I think we'd have a bit of a laugh like that. Me and Brad. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here with Chris Reardon. No, it'd have to be the other way around, wouldn't it? With Bradley Walsh and Chris Reardon, I suppose. That'd be quite good. Good morning, Peter. Uh, thank you, Dow. Bradley Walsh. Yeah, that's the one, Dadley Bradley Walsh. I quite like him. <laughs> Lee says I'd give her a pair of hands. What, Holly Willoughby? You like her, do you? 
Do you want me to send her around? I can bring her up now and send her around if you want. Her husband won't be too pleased, though, will he? <laughs> uh, John says, Emma Willis and Stephen Mulher Mul Mulhern. Stephen Mulhern. Uh, which one is he now? I, I confuse him on this subject. Let me have a quick look, look on a picture of Stephen Mulhern. See if he's one I like or not, or I don't like. Because there is a, there is a comedian. Uh, Stephen Mulher. No, it's him as well. He's on everything as well. Sick of seeing the same face. I've watched a couple of um, Stephen Mulhern's uh, shows, and he doesn't come across as as um, as natural either. It's a bit fake. That fake smile. It's like Ben Shepherd. Have you seen Ben Shepherd? That fake smile. Now, when I smile, you know I'm smiling at you. But it's not. I can do a fake smile. Like that. Fake, dear. Fake, fake, fake all the time. Dear me. 0208144 Who do you want to host I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here? If uh, if good old Ant can't do it. Have you, oh, do you remember that time? I don't think they're very good without the old auto cue going around, Ant and Deck. Because I remember they were doing a thing on a boat and that all went wrong there and they could they weren't able to cover it with a bit of ad limon or anything like that. <laughs> Good old Dan Condé. Who, who would you like to see hosting I Am A Celebrity Get Me Out Of Here? Put your messages up there and I'll read them out. Or you can call in 020-8144-3477 um, uh, is my phone number. Good morning to Ashley, who's joining us this morning. Morning, Ashley. Uh, John, what you say? John says it's what Adele cancelled the shows for. What did Adele cancel the shows for? A McDonald's? <laughs> Did someone invite her out to McDonald's? <laughs> I don't need to go to McDonald's. To, I've got my, I'm doing, I've got my weight loss. Thank you. Twelve and a half pounds so far. Thank you very much. I'm having a vegetable risotto for lunch this afternoon. Oh, actually, it's actually lunch time now, isn't it? Twelve o'clock. That's what I'm doing. Vegetable risotto today. Uh, the Chuckle Brothers. Can we see the Chuckle Brothers hosting? I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Something like that. Possibly, possibly. Ken Dodd! That's an... Oh, Ken Dodd would be great. Ken Dodd, proper entertainers, thank you. Proper entertainers with senses of humour. And natural laughs and smiles and things like that. That's what we want, dear. That's what we want. Let's have another story here. Um... Here we go. Look what the American students are doing now. A new snortable chocolate powder has come onto the market as a way to get a quick buzz. But doctors warn it could cause serious health problems. Oh, yes. Coco Loco, that's L-O-K-O, -O, a powder intended to be inserted directly into the nasal cavity, debuted last month as a legal drug-free way to get a quick energy boost. I'm not liking the sound of that. Oh, and I've seen it in nightclubs for years. People doing their drugs. Oh, God, how can you stick anything up your nose like that? It's all, oh, it's horrible. Well, it must be horrible. Yeah. Oh, and, and it, did they do it on top of toilet systems, don't they? Go in the toilet like that they are. And, oh, did, how, what germs are on top of those toilets? I don't suppose these people ever take, you know, little wet wipes antibiotic wet, wipe, wet wipes and dust the top of their toilets before they start stiffing their blooming disgusting drugs all over the place. <laughs> oh, it's awful. Uh, a doctor says a sinus specialist uh, in New York City, uh, an author of Sinus Relief Now, told the Daily Mail online he thinks there's a slim chance a chocolate powder could give you a high and it will simply cause health issues. I mean, you... What a funny way to have chocolate. Don't you just like to break off a square, pop it in your mouth and, and let it melt over your tongue? Oh, I haven't done that for weeks and weeks and weeks. Or, you know, you bite. Oh, galaxy dairy milk chocolate. Non-Irish Mary from Ireland. She used to bring me in bars of chocolate all the time. Great big bars of gallery. Oh, at one point, I was on one a night, sometimes two. <laughs> Not good for diabetes, is it really? Dr. Joseph, uh, Joseph, Josephson says powder should never be snorted or put up someone's nose. Hey, I see he's telling you now. 
it could just lead to infection, obstruction and sinus problems down the line. Because the project has sugar in it, it will likely create a sludge. <laughs> Blocking the nasal passageway and keeping sinuses from doing their job, which is adversarial to the lungs. See, I see. The product has been created uh, by a 29-year-old who owns the Orlando-based company Legal Lean. This is in this morning's Daily Mail. It's 20 quid. Uh, $20. It's $20. It's available on the company's website where it's described as giving the user an endorphin rush, a serotonin rush, euphoric energy and a calm focus. We can get that by just watching this programme, can't you? You don't need to be shoving stuff up your nose, boys and girls. Come on. Move away from that nasty stuff. Its main ingredient is cacao powder, which is high in nutrients and low in fatty acids and sugars. Uh, the ingredients, though naturally occurring, can be linked to serious health problems in high doses. So don't do it, please. You don't need to be shoving chocolate up your nose every five minutes, does you? Dear me. Awful, awful. Um, uh, good morning, Shania. Does your parish church priest tell you to get on your bike if you moan about the hymns? <laughs> I don't moan about the hymns, ever. In fact, I had a little word with my parish priest today. Oh, yes. Now, where my church is, uh, it's just before you get into the main part of Wokingham. But they've got a car park, you see. And in Wokingham, it's, it's difficult to park. Right, and I said to Father today, I said to him, excuse me, Father, if I go to Wokingham, is it allowed to park in a car? Oh, of course it is, he said. Yeah, no problem at all. As long as there's no, no funeral in here or something like that. He said, the only thing is, if it's a funeral, you might get blocked in. Uh, he said, but any other time you want to park there, yeah, just park there. Oh, thank you very much, Father. You see, you're a member of the church. You get all these things free of charge. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Anyway, I'm going to do my lunch now. So I'm going to, oh, hang on a minute. Who sent me, who sent me pictures? Here? Oh. Gosh, Kevin. Kevin's just sent me a little, loads of pictures of, uh, of, oh my God. Is that Lily Lemon there? Look at her. Oh, there's me and you. Is that me and you? That's me and you there. Can I show you this on? That is me, isn't it? On the right, in the red T-shirt. Uh, let me try and show you this, boys and girls. I'm going to have to be clever with this, so hang on. Uh, ooh. That is me. That is, that is me, isn't it? In the red top there. My God, where did you come across that, that picture? Right. It takes me a little while to to get this onto your screens, boys and girls. Uh, now I've got to find the damn thing now. I've got so much on my desktop. Is that it there? Dating show? No, that's not it. That's not it. Hang on. Come on, where is it? Pride. I'm sure I saved that there. <laughs> Can't find it now. Too late if you want to call in now. Lines are now closed, boys and girls. I've closed the phone lines. Look at that. I can't find, I don't know what I've done with that picture now. Do you want to see this picture or what? Uh, where's that gone now? Is it image? There it is, there it is. Hang on, right, okay. So open that one. Uh, where is it? Users. Is that it there? Desktop. Ah, there we are. Right, put that. On there and there. I'll show you this, right? I don't know how old this picture is. That is me, isn't it, Kevin? Hang on, let's go back to that list. Kevin, are you still there? Oh, don't say he's gone now. Hang on a minute. So, studio mode. Uh, Alright, get rid of that one. Yep. God, that's so old, that picture. Put that one there, that one there. So it's very long-winded. That's why I always sort this stuff out usually before I come and chat to you. Right, there it is. There it is there. That one there. Right, ready? This. That is me there, isn't it? <laughs> God! That's me, look! On the right, how young am I there? Uh, that's got to be... 28, 30, 40, 
That must be 27 years old. Look, I've got lips, all young and pretty. Although I do look like I've been out the night before, don't I? <laughs> is that you on the left there, Kevin, as well? Gosh, that is an, a Saturn old photograph. I love it. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Kevin. I am baby face. I am baby face. Baby face Chris. Oh, yes. <laughs> lovely jubbly, that is. Lovely jubbly. All right, let's do today's uh, birthdays, boys and girls. And then I'm going to go down and do my uh, uh, nice vegetable rice risotto this morning. Uh, happy birthday today to the lovely little nun Lisa. Happy birthday, my darling. Have a lovely day today. Happy birthday to Maxine Roberts, who's been to a few of my uh, karaoke nights. Happy birthday, Maxine. To Donna Borg, 49 years old today. And to Richard Fisher. It's his birthday as well today. Happy birthday, gang. Here comes the song. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday little nun Maxine, Donna and Richard, happy birthday to you. Alright, happy birthday everyone. Hello Paul, I've just seen Paul Stone join us there. Oh, she didn't turn up last night, Paul, we had no act last night, can you believe that? Just think, if you would have been there, you could have done, had a job last night, never mind. That's it today, boys and girls. Uh, Sunday night, of course, karaoke tonight is at the Camden Eye, karaoke Eye at the Camden Eye tonight in Camden Town. Come out of the tube station on the Finchley Road side, I think it is, cross over the road and you are in there. Starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at uh, around about quarter to 11, actually, it finishes just before 11 o'clock. Tonight and every Sunday, 8 till 10.45, 11 o'clock, karaoke at the Camden Eye, Camden Town in London. Enjoy your Sunday, boys and girls. I should now go and do my uh, vegetable risotto. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>